In the dark world of boxing, Scott Dixon's story emerges as a perfect example of betrayal and poetic justice. In 2004, he suffered an attack so brutal, it's almost unthinkable. Yet a decade later, the tides would turn, with the attacker becoming the prey. In today's episode, we'll delve into this gripping tale of violence and revenge with an unexpected twist at the end that will blow your mind. With that being said, please smash the likes and we'll get started. Nestled in Hamilton, Lanarkshire, a young Scott Dixon's passion for boxing ignited from the age of four. The guidance came naturally, as his grandfather, Toby Dixon, was a respected figure in the boxing community. By the time Scott was seven, he'd already tasted competition. At 12, his tally was an impressive 30 bouts. And as he transitioned into adulthood, he added a staggering 100 fights to his record. When he made the leap to professional boxing, history was made. Scott was the youngest to ever do so in the UK. He quickly marked his territory in the professional circuit, amassing 40 victories by 2004, with only a few losses. In a span of a decade, he not only won most of his matches, but also clinched the coveted Commonwealth Champions title and was ranked fifth in the world by various organisations. But it was in the early 2000s that Scott's boxing career got a little messy. According to a news report and interview in 2002, Scott was at that point boxing out of the Peacock Gym, which is run by the Bowers, a respected family from Canning Town. The Bowers brothers reached notoriety for an audacious robbery at Gatwick Airport of 1.2 million, allegedly to fund the boxing gym they owned. And the Met Police once classed them as one of the most prominent crime families across the UK, and they were jailed in 2004 after Scott Dixon's time with them. According to the report, there seems to have been a fallout at the Peacock Gym, and they refused to let him feature on their promotions for reasons unknown. Scott went back to Glasgow and was running back and forth to London, getting involved in serious criminal activity as well as his boxing. He had been managed by two infamous brothers from Glasgow throughout his career, and allegedly Scott told them that he was not going to re-sign with them at the end of his current contract. According to Scott, the Glaswegian promoters threatened to end his career if he was to leave them. A heated argument followed, with Dixon telling him in no uncertain terms he would do what he wanted with his career. Three days later, Scott's life would change forever. The haunting night is still fresh in the memories of those who knew his story. Dixon, abducted from his own house by friends he grew up with, was taken to the desolate countryside. What followed was an act so heinous that it defied human comprehension. Battered with hammers, stabbed 18 times, shot in the legs and left with both arms broken with baseball bat blows. Dixon's attackers didn't just aim to incapacitate him, they wanted him dead. With a fractured skull and stabs even to his feet, they discarded him in a field, leading him to the mercies of the cold, soaking rain. In what could only be described as a testament to the human spirit, a voice inside Dixon's head urged him to keep moving. He started singing. One more step along the world we go, using the melody as a beacon of hope. On his hands and knees, Dixon began crawling towards salvation. Every move risked being run over, but the alternative falling into the ditch wasn't an option. Eventually, the faint light of a farmhouse beckoned him. Dixon's desperate knocks on the window brought him the aid he so desperately needed. After being taken to the hospital, Dixon's fight for life didn't end. On the operating table, his heart stopped but he was miraculously brought back from the brink. The attack didn't just end his boxing career at that time, but it also left him with physical and emotional scars that would last a lifetime. But who could perpetrate such an act of violence? The culprits were closer than anyone could imagine. The boxing brothers, according to Scott, made good on their threats when he decided to move his career to London. According to Scott, they orchestrated this grisly assault as retribution. One of the main perpetrators was Gary McMillan, a former Scottish schoolboy boxing champion. Apparently driven by jealousy and rage, he played a significant role in the attack. McMillan's fury was further fueled when he discovered that Dixon had been seen as ex-girlfriend. The High Court in Glasgow later sentenced McMillan to five years in prison for his role in the vicious sustained attack on Dixon. However, fate has a strange way of turning the tables. Over a decade after the assault on Dixon, McMillan found himself on the receiving end of violence. In a twisted turn of karma, McMillan was abducted, attacked with a machete, battered with baseball bats and bound with cable ties. His attackers demanded a hefty sum and McMillan, drenched in his own blood, was eventually set free, carrying the physical and psychological scars of the assault. The parallels between the two incidents are eerily similar. Both involve brutal beatings, abductions and revenge. 
Both Dixon and McMillan were left fighting for their lives after the attacks. According to the excellent podcast Liquid Bullet Productions, Scott since his relocation to Malta, where he has prospered continuing boxing and training fighters, has also been on bail since 2009, spanning incredibly over 14 years, with his case still pending. During a family visit to Edinburgh, he was apparently apprehended by the Serious Organised Crime Unit on charges of orchestrating the importation of 500 key of green. Scott explained that he had trained in a gym whilst on holiday in Scotland, and another member of the gym, later arrested, implicated him as the mastermind behind the operation, an allegation he strongly denies. Despite the gravity of the accusations, he was permitted to return to Malta, but under stringent bail conditions. He spent seven long years under house arrest, and to this day, he awaits the verdict. A guilty judgment could potentially imprison him for up to 25 years. Scott Dixon's story is another of the realities of the strong ties boxing has with figures in the underworld, where violence is often prevalent inside and outside of the ring. Dixon's story serves as a chilling reminder of this cycle of vengeance, the dangers of betrayal and the unpredictable hand of karma. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. And sometimes the past has a way of catching up, no matter how fast you try to outrun it. Okay, thank you for listening to that. That was the video 100. So a big thank you to all my subs, all my viewers, and people who have contributed in the comments. I love going through the comments and seeing people's views and also getting their personal stories, which I find fascinating. Um, so a big thank you to all of you.